Hi, this is Paul with Topa 3D. We're going to do another Topa talk on some 3D scanning applications. In this particular episode, I'm going to be talking about the comparison of the Matterport point cloud and the Ferro point cloud using Cloud Compare software. So here we are inside of Cloud Compare, and you can see a point cloud that I brought in. I've sliced it up using the clipping box. So we have a Matterport point cloud and a Ferro point cloud. I've registered these together using these points that you can see here and here are the statistics for those points. After I performed the registration, I also did a fine registration, which is pretty much a cloud-to-cloud -cloud registration. And what you do in Cloud Compare to do that is you designate one of the point clouds as the model and one as the data receiver. So the model is the Faro point cloud in this case because it's the most accurate, and the data receiver is the Matterport model point cloud. What I mean by data receiver is it's actually the point cloud that will receive the scalar information that Cloud Compare produces, which is actually the comparative results in an RGB color scale. And I'll demonstrate that in a little bit to show you how those colors sort of make sense. So here are the settings that I used. On the left, you have a window that just shows the parameters and the RMS difference. I just kept the defaults for those. And then the second window uh, in the middle, it also shows the research tab. Again, I kept the uh, statistics for those, but I also checked the box, enable the furthest points removal. So what this was is because when I did the cut in Cloud Compare, uh, when I sliced up the point cloud to match with another point cloud that I had from Matterport, uh, the overlap wasn't absolutely perfect. So I just said, enable the furthest points removal. So any points that aren't in the comparison analysis, just get rid of them. And then the final uh, window you see here is the registration info. This shows the final uh, root mean square RMS value at 0 0.05 meters. So that's a pretty good registration, and uh, it also gives you the transformational matrix and, sta and statistics like this. After that's complete, that brings us to the distance computation tool. Uh, it first creates an octree, which is a visualization sort of algorithm that's developed for most point cloud software these days. And it just creates this sort of uh, pre-rendered state. And it's at this point, assigning scalar value to the Matterport point cloud. The recommendation of the Cloud Compare software is to first uh, set your most dense point cloud uh, as the base model and then produce the lighter point cloud or assign the lighter point cloud as the receiver of the scalar information as I said before. So that's what I've done here. So right now what it's doing is it's running through this comparison and it's spitting out scalar data and attaching it to the Matterport point cloud, which is the less dense point cloud. And these are the settings. I just use the default settings for that. Uh, you say compute. It takes a little bit of time. Usually it took about 20 minutes uh, for these particular point clouds to complete. And uh, But that was a little bit random. It wasn't entirely predictable how long it was going to take to do that because I did it a few different times. Uh, anyway, so here is the results and um, the animations. I'll walk through those and explain what's happening with those. In this animation, I have the scalar showing up on the Matterport point cloud, but this is actually the Faro information and the Matterport information superimposed upon one another. It's just represented on one set of geometry, but the color ramp is actually representing two uh, point clouds at the same time. At this level, this is a quarter inch. You can see that the blue is actually the very accurate within a quarter inch sort of data and the red is would be the least accurate that's as far out as you can get and then the gradations in between it goes from blue to green to yellow to red is essentially how you can look at the accuracy of this what i'd like to point out in this particular graphic is that there's a lot of blue the blue in the Matterport point cloud. And that's good news. That means within a quarter of an inch, Matterport is matching up with the Faro point cloud. It should also be noted, however, there's a lot of red. And red is completely out of tolerance for this quarter inch sort of accuracy that I've put together. And that, in my estimation, is showing a lot of noise. The Matterport scanner is actually not cleaning itself up like the Faro scanner is in this process, although it is hitting the same geometry and the same geolocation. And so as we move through these animations, you'll kind of see how that becomes more apparent. In this animation, you're seeing a comparison at the half inch level and the one inch level. And as you raise the tolerances, obviously you're going to get more blue uh, as Matterport has a little bit more matching with the Faro point cloud. 
And I just wanted to show you these so that you get a better idea at different tolerances, uh, just how accurate that Matterport point cloud is. On the top right of the animation right now, there's a lot of red. That's just where the um, overlap of the scans isn't perfect, so it's seeing no correlation at all at that point. And uh, the reds also are showing up um, on the shiny surfaces a lot. So highly reflective surfaces or surfaces that are at a high inclination uh, from the viewpoint of the scanner are definitely going to have red. Here we have a cloud comparison between two and three inches. The two inches up on top is looking pretty good. There's a lot of green, but there's also a lot of blue. And that's what's important is it is actually putting the geometry in the same place, but the noise and the reflectivity is also giving cloud compare a little bit of difficulty in making that correlation. And then at the three inches below, you'll see higher and higher correlations. And finally, for this project, we have this six cents correlation. I didn't see any reason to go any further uh, because pretty much everything is blue. You'll see in the animation, there are some green areas, some yellow areas, and a couple of red areas. And that's, again, I believe because of the angle of incidence between the Matterport scanner and the wall. And so it's producing a lot of noise and Pharaoh put it, the point cloud on that surface as well. So you, it's not finding a great correlation between those two areas. The other thing to note about this particular set of point clouds is that this area was highly reflective and you'll also see a link to the Matterport model that you can view at your leisure to just see how reflective those surfaces were because this was in the construction phase of this project. Uh, this was uh, located near Beaverton, Oregon at the St. Vincent's Hospital area. They were creating a uh, rehab sort of um, gymnasium. And uh, it's a great project, uh, and it's going to have a great purpose for the people that get to use it. Another way we can look at these point clouds is just to do a quick comparison between the Faro scans and the Matterport scans. You can see the Matterport scans are much thinner than the Faro scans here. And you can also find that when you do this comparative analysis, that's going to reflect that sparsity in the point clouds as well. What I'd like to do now is run you through just a few representative examples of the comparison of the point clouds between Matterport and Faro. You'll see that the Faro scans have a lot denser sort of point cloud data and the Matterport is quite thin. In fact, Matterport doesn't even pick up some of the pipes, unfortunately. And I believe it's because the surfaces have low reflectivity. So in other words, black pipes or very dark pipes are probably not gonna be seen in the Matterport point cloud. And that's gonna be a really big problem if you're trying to rely on a Matterport point cloud to do any kind of MEP sort of verification. So you'll see in these several examples, uh, just the comparison between the two, Pharaoh's picking up everything and Matterport's leaving out a lot of data. Uh, that's probably because of the reflectivity of the surfaces in this particular point cloud, and also because of the, uh, the piping. Uh, also very small pipes are gonna have a hard time getting picked up in the Matterport point cloud as well. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're going to do a project that has this sort of application. And so that takes us to our next point. We're going to look at another larger uh, project that we scanned with both Faro and the Matterport and show a comparative analysis between those two point clouds and some of the things that show up on these larger projects. This graphic here shows the registration between the Bean Hall Matterport point cloud and the Faro point cloud. We scanned this large space for a remodel with both scanners to do this comparative analysis to see how the Matterport performs. Here we have both point clouds superimposed upon one another. One is in scalar view and one is in the RGB value. And this animation here is just showing the Matterport point cloud. It's showing the photorealism and the entirety of the Bean Hall project to give you context for this particular analysis. One of the other goals of doing a project like this with the Faro and the Matterport on a project this size is to be able to see how the Matterport scanner closes on itself. In other words, how good the actual registration is between uh, long range projects and short range projects.
This comparison is going to show you the difference between floor one and the basement of Bean Hall in different scalar views, just like we did before. I'll also show you the cut view and see through the building so you have a little bit different angle on the scalar views. This first animation is just showing a comparison on the RGB and the first level of scalar, which I put at a quarter inch. Which, and, and the reason I use a quarter inch is because that's usually the ferro tolerances we go for for the entirety of a data set. You'll see that most of this is red, um, and there's some green in there and so forth. This is not a really clear area or way to see the scalar view, um, but it is sort of giving us an indication that the registration over long distances may be problematic. This next animation shows the scalar view in one inch and two inches, top to bottom respectively. And now we're starting to see some blue show up. And that tells me that there's a, a good chance that the Matterport is actually comparing well with the Faro scans in a lot of areas. So it is making matches. However, you'll see on the ceiling that there's a lot of red still. And that's just occlusions probably or data that wasn't collected by the Matterport scanner. And also you'll see sharp red contrasts in rooms that weren't scanned by the Faro scanner. So as we go through this, you'll see those uh, sticking out pretty profoundly. One thing I observed in this uh, sequence of animations, especially between the three and six inch, that you have a, a lot of correlation on one part of the building. You see a lot of blue, but then it starts going into the green, yellows, and reds on the other side of the building. You know, it's hard to say what's going on with that. This was a kitchen area, so there was a lot of reflectivity going on. But also, there could be a concern with the alignment of the point clouds. Uh, I did scan this with a Matterport scanner in a large circle so that it would close upon itself, as I do with my Faro scanner. Uh, the only thing is, it's hard to say why there's a, a little bit of drift as we go down the length of the corridor. It's important to note that the alignment of the Faro scans is very good, as can be seen in the report in this blog. We are really questioning what the Matterport is doing in the uh, alignment process. Uh, alignment of the Matterport scans are algorithmic, so they're done in the cloud. We don't have any control of those. So we just have to take this with a grain of salt and say that sometimes I think the Matterport is going to register very closely, and sometimes it might have a little bit of slack when it's going over long distances. This next animation is showing the RGB values of floor one with the Matterport scans and the scalar values at a quarter inch with the Faro and Matterport scans superimposed upon one another. And you can see here that at this level we have a lot of red, but we still have correlation. This particular view at half inch and one inch is getting kind of interesting. I'm paying attention to the walls and I'm not seeing a lot of correlation as we go down the length of the building, but I do see some on the floor. At the two and three inch level, it's getting kind of interesting. We're not seeing wall correlations on the far end of the building on the right side of this animation. And that may be because it was dark there and also because it's highly reflective there on the walls. It's all sort of ceramic tile. As the animation begins here at the six and 12 inch, you'll see red, yellows, and greens because that was outdoors. So the scanner wasn't having as high a performance. And on the right side of this animation, we see a lot of red, which could be a misregistration on the Matterport end, or it could be the reflectivity or darkness of that area. As we start looking at the scalar view of the basement level at a quarter inch accuracy, what we're seeing here is very little correlation, just some green and yellows and a lot of red. This could be because as we connected the two floors, we had to go down some stairwells and we don't know just how well Matterport performs in these sort of circumstances uh, because we don't have registration information. So it is best in my recommendation that if you're going to do any kind of accuracy between two floors that you scan the, the two floors as independents unless you have a lot of ways to tie those two floors together with multiple stairwells. Looking at the half inch and one inch scalar views, it's actually kind of encouraging to see that we still have blue in areas where there was a lot of piping uh, and uh, features that really needed to correlate. The, the problem we 
are having though is that we don't know just where the Matterport point cloud is sitting in relation to the Faro point cloud precisely. It looks like the Matterport point cloud might be a little high. Uh, and that could be because of the registration between the top floor and the bottom floor in the Matterport. Uh, but we do see correlations here uh, at these low tolerances, which is really great news. And so again, this conclusion keeps drawing me back to the idea that if you do something in a relatively small data set, like maybe several rooms tied together um, that don't go over the span of a football field, which is what this building does, you probably will have really good results. At the 6 inch and 12 inch scalar, we see great matching and the large red areas you can ignore because those were not scanned with the Faro scanner. This cut view is kind of interesting because you can see into the uh, depths of the building. It just gives you a little bit different angle to evaluate how the scalar is showing up and populating. Uh, again, you see very little blue correlation at the level of a quarter inch. Note as we get down the length of the building, you'll start seeing less and less correlations. Again, I believe that this could be an alignment issue, uh, although I did suggest that there was other anomalies in the building, such as light problems and also uh, the reflectivity issues in the kitchen area. It is recommended that when you're doing any kind of scanning with a pixel to pixel registration scanner, such as the Matterport, that you definitely scan in a circle, that you have the scans follow up on themselves. So you want to make sure that that way the algorithms can figure out how to, to evenly distribute that error on some level. And then you can fill in the middle scans of the building uh, after that outer traverse has been closed. We find that so far has produced the best results. And as we learn more and work with the developers with Matterport, we'll publish uh, better field methods as they become available. Thanks for joining me on this comparative analysis between the Faro scans and the Matterport scans. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at info at topa3d.com. Also, as we move forward using the Matterport scanner, the Faro scanner, and in the future, mobile scanning solutions that are being created with SLAM technologies, uh, we're going to be happy to produce those results for you to see how those uh, data sets correlate with one another. Our staff at Topa 3D are experts at helping design firms to rapidly survey a project site with 3D capture technology or to train them how to do it in-house, providing best practices with 3D acquisition hardware and software. I'm Paul Tice with Topa 3D. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.